Big game number three tonight in Miami. Sixers Heat will have it for you here live on 97.3 ESPN. The coverage starts at 7 o'clock. Let's get into that and the NBA playoffs with Kurt Heelan of NBC Sports Radio, the 24-7 live sports talk network. You can listen at NBCSportsRadio.com. He joins us with a look at that big game. And I guess the big question is we don't know much about this game until we know the status of Joel Embiid, Kurt. He is doubtful for tonight. How, um, you know... Do you think that game two told us a lot about the Sixers without Embiid, or can they rebound if he does not play? I think they can rebound. I think that they can, and they they can. There's, you know, there'll be adjustments. They can play better. And it's look, it's the first playoffs for a lot of these guys. It's a young team, and that's this. Welcome to the playoffs, where the other team adjusts and bounces back, and the shot you had in the first game isn't quite there in the second game the same way, and you've got to find and adapt back. This is all. You know, that's a veteran experienced team um, over in Miami that's very disciplined. Like, they, they are a well-coached uh, team that gets the most out of their talent, honestly. I mean, they don't have a Ben Simmons or a Joel Embiid, with all due respect to Goran Dragic. They just – they don't have – I mean, Goran Dragic is their best player, and he's kind of a borderline all-star type of guy. They don't have elite players, but they get a lot out of the guys they have. They're going to be smart in Game 3. They're going to be home and comfortable – um, and but I think you can see a Sixers team that does that does go okay. So we have to do this to come back, and they they've done this all season. They've been smart, and you you keep you you find a way to win and make it interesting until you do get Embiid back, and then pretty much everything we know about the series once he returns, we can just throw out the window because it just yeah. completely changes. Well, <laughs> if he doesn't play, and I mean he is doubtful. Um, you know he has been practicing, right. shooting around. We all see the videos of him stroking threes from all over the place, but that's not going to get you in the lineup. If he doesn't play. What adjustment do they need to make from what you saw in game number two? Because they won the first game by 29, so they didn't need him that night. So what do they need to do in game three if he doesn't play? What kind of adjustment uh, did the Heat make that now Brett Brown has to make? Yeah, part of that is just comfort with getting the shots they want and getting J.J. Redick more involved and, and knocking down those threes. I mean, look, they were 11 of 15 from three in the second half of game one when they pulled away and kind of blew the doors off of them. And then they started the next game two of 15 from three. You, and that's – the, the reality is that they, the Sixers are somewhere in the middle there. You know, they're, they're not – they're not super hot shooting elect, but they've got guys who can knock it down. They've got to find a way to get Simmons attacking downhill a little more and in transition a little more, and then find Redick and other shooters out where they can start knocking down shots. They need a little more from Sarich that way. Um, and that, and I think that that's the idea, is to get Simmons downhill and attacking and then opening that up and then running J.J. off of, you know, like like Doc Rivers did, like you guys have done this year. Give him, you know, Eric Spolstra did this with Ray Allen. Give him the treatment back. Run him off 17,000 right. picks <laughs> and get him open. Um, so, yeah, I think it can work also. They've got to get back to being that kind of – that's a tough team to defend because all their guys can create and move the ball, but you've, you've got to use that length to, to create some turnovers and some opportunities. Kurt Heelan's with us, uh, NBA uh, writer for NBC Sports Radio. Um, uh, can Dwayne Wade go to the Wade back machine a couple more times? Does he still have that in him? They're gonna they're gonna need that from him three more times. Can he do it? I don't know if he's got three. He's got one. I don't know, maybe two. He, he's, they use him well in that sense because what did he play in that game? Twenty low, tw mid high twenties in minutes. That's about the max he can do on these kind of nights. And on the nights where he's making plays. He's – and honestly, making tough mid-rangers. I think he was 7 of 9 from mid-range in that game. When he's making those difficult mid-range shots, he's really tough to stop. Um, but he doesn't do it consistently anymore. He just doesn't have the legs for it. So I don't know if you're going to see it in game three, but you, uh, you might see it in game four. Like you, you're going to see it a, once or twice more this season uh, series. I don't know that he's got three, though. All right, uh, Kurt, let's look uh, at LeBron's night last night, 46. I mean, he knew what was at stake there. He came out and scored, what, like the first 15 points of the game or something ridiculous yeah. like that. Uh, but you got to give the, the Pacers credit. They didn't go down easily. So do we have a fist fight in that series? We absolutely do. This is this is this is a, you know a fist fight, a rock fight. Whatever. Call it what you want to call it. This one's going to go down for a while because if I'm a Pacers fan right now, I'm feeling pretty good. Look, LeBron James went just molten lava hot, right? I mean, he just <laughs> melted everything. They got better play with their new starting lineup from J.R. Smith. They just the rotations worked a lot better. And by the way, Victor Oladipo was in foul trouble. 
Nate McMillan sat him unnecessarily long because of it, and frankly, that's a whole other discussion. But Victor Oladipo only played 28 minutes. Their offense isn't nearly as good without him. And yet, with 30 seconds to go, Oladipo hits that three, and it's a tie game. I'm feeling pretty good that this is a series that can go our way, especially if you're a Pacer fan. You're now going home. Your role player should be better. You're going to get a little more out of Miles Turner and, and Sabonis and everybody, and, you know, Collison and everybody else. And well, I think this is a six or seven game series now that could could honestly flip either way. Kurt, uh, we got the other game last night. Utah goes Oklahoma City. Now Oklahoma City, it looked like they had started to turn the corner a little bit, uh, and then Donovan Mitchell said, "Not so fast." He upstaged the big three. Yeah, uh, Donovan Mitchell had 13 fourth quarter points, and the big three were 0 of 15 in the in the thir- fourth. That's a resilient team. I mean, yes, look, they defend really well. The, those numbers, the off offensive numbers, yeah. That, look, they're not the big three, and OKC aren't going to be that bad every game. But they're not. They can test shots. They make you work for your buckets. That's the best defensive team in the league, and they're resilient. I mean, remember. They were, what, nine games under five hundred midway through the season, five games out of the playoffs. They were done, right? Yep. Except they weren't. They, they, this team did not give up, and that's how they are. They just don't roll over. They don't quit. They play smart. They play hard, and they're, they're just – it's going to be tough. Yeah. That, that's a, that's a seven-game series that honestly is going to go either way. That's just, just such an even series. Uh, I'm a little surprised with Portland. I liked Portland's team. Uh, they lose two at home, uh, so you're writing off the Portland Trailblazers. Pretty close. I don't know. They've got to find a way to get offense from other guys. Uh, um, New- I'm with you. I'm a little surprised because my thought was, yeah, look, Drew Holiday and they're trapping defense, and they're, we're going to make Damian Lillard's life difficult because that's what they should do. Um, but, you know, then C.J. McCollum will step up, and they've had a good season from Amino, and Nurkic is a good offensively. And none of that other stuff has happened enough. They, they haven't gotten enough out of McCollum. Other guys have not knocked down shots like they need to. Uh, Nurkic hasn't been the force inside. I mean, he's not going to stop Anthony Davis. Nobody's stopping Anthony Davis, but it's Drew Holiday on the drive that's still driving them. It's They just have not played well enough, and New Orleans is brimming with confidence now and going home and having the, the home-cooked gumbo. I, I really <laughs> like them in this series now, man. Uh, Kurt Hill is with us here. Uh, we got Golden State tonight. We feel pretty good about that. Minnesota lost again last night, so you got a bunch of 0-2s here. Any of these teams down 0-2, you've got uh, the Wizards, you've got Milwaukee, the couple I just mentioned. You feel good about any of them? Or are they all done? The Wizards, I feel like, still like on paper going home, are the one team that just maybe Beal finds his shot, but they're so inconsistent. I've kind of... I want to believe in the Bucks. I mean, Giannis has been 32 points, 11 boards, eight board, you know, assists. He's been he's been great, but that team is so undisciplined. It just, you know, next year, man, they're going to have a new coach, and whoever whoever that coach is, that's the co- job everybody wants. Whoever that coach is is going to actually put in a system, and they're going to be dangerous. <laughs> you put in a system with those guys, right. and they'll be actually good. Um, but I don't think they're getting there this year. Washington, if I were going to pick one, it's just Washington because there's so much talent on that roster. But man. If you build bad habits over the course of a season and are inconsistent, it comes back to bite you. Speaking of coaches, which one got yelled at for winning? <laughs> I wish I'd, I'd been trying to find that out. I mean, it's, it's speculation. I, I, the Kings would make some sense, but I because I just Ranadive is such a hard to predict kind of guy. Right. But who knows? I mean, it's, it's you know, I can't imagine the Hawks did it. The who knows? The Knicks are in that mix. I just there's some te- there were some teams that had some big wins down the stretch, and it could have been that. I just that's a hell of a story. You know, I, it is. It's you know what? It's one thing if you say, "Hey, we're going to tank. We're not good. We're going to put out." And and this was what Philadelphia did. Let's be honest. Put out lineups that are not likely to win a lot of games because we're going to play the youngsters and we're not looking to win right now, and we're just going to develop guys. It's a completely different thing to actively try to lose a game as a coach. You put out a poor right. lineup, but you tell that coach and players to go all out when they're out there. It is bad for the – really bad for the culture to to take that another step. That's a good point. Kurt Heelan at uh, uh, Basketball Talk on Twitter, NBC Sports Radio. He joined us here on the Boardwalk Honda Hotline. Kurt, thank you so much. Take care, man.